Hi, everybody. I'm Newswatch 16, Stacey Lang, and welcome to Case of Interest Coburger. This is a brand new web exclusive segment that we're going to make available on WNEP.com so that week to week we can take a deep dive into the documents of this highly uh, publicized case that involves someone from our area. Of course, we're talking about the Idaho University of Idaho murders. Four students were murdered at the University of Idaho on November 13th. It was a highly publicized case then and for weeks following. And then all of a sudden, it took a turn and ended up in northeastern and central Pennsylvania when the suspect in that murders, Brian Koberger, was arrested in Monroe County. He's a native of our area. And all of a sudden, this became a, a local story as well. So we hope that this segment on WNEP.com will help uh, all the folks here in our area understand what's going on in the case. Whether or not you're a true crime fan who followed the Idaho, Idaho 4 case from the very beginning and is, is interested uh, in this type, type of news story, or you just suddenly became interested in this case after it became a local story with Brian Koberger's arrest that happened on December 30th. We have a lot of waiting to do until we answer a lot of the questions in this case, like motive. How well did Koberger know these victims if he knew them at all? And we're hoping to learn those things in a preliminary hearing that will that is scheduled for June 26th in Idaho. So many months still of waiting to figure out some of the key building blocks of the prosecution's case here. But every week, the Idaho courts release a series of documents that had been filed in, in the days prior that shed some light on the work that's being done as prosecutors and defense attorneys prepare for this case. And what we're going to do here on case of interest is go through those documents uh, and see what might shed light on on what's going on in the case and, and what there might be for us to learn. There was a really important piece of information that was released today that we will be reporting on on Newswatch 16, and that's that the University of Idaho announced today that the house where those four students were murdered is going to be demolished. The owner of that house transferred the property to the university, and the university is making the decision now to tear it down. We don't know when, um, but, but that obviously will be an emotional time for folks out in Idaho watching that house come down because it is been, I'd imagine, very emotional to see it stand there as a crime scene for all these many weeks. So that, that's a big key detail that came out today. There's something else we're, we're waiting on that we expect to see soon, and that is the search warrant that police here in Pennsylvania got to arrest Koberger and search his home in Chestnut Hill Township in Monroe County. We were told back when he was arrested in December that that search warrant would be sealed for about 60 days, and that time is almost up. So we're expecting in the coming days, maybe weeks, to get a look at what specifically police officers and FBI agents were looking for when they raided that home in Chestnut Hill Township on December 30th. That's going to be another key detail in uncovering some details of this case. There's one thing that's that really is the main focus of the Koberger case right now, as the attorneys are working hard on preparing for that preliminary hearing on June 26th, there's a whole other, actually two other legal battles going on <clears throat> right now. And it has to do with the non-dissemination order or gag order in this case, which the judge uh, put in place immediately after Koberger's arrest and bars prosecutors and lawyers uh, and, and law enforcement officials from speaking about the case. And then it went one step further and also barred families and attorneys representing the families of the victims from speaking as well. So now there are two lawsuits um, and I'm going to share my screen now so you can take a look at what we're what we're really going to be focusing on on case of interest. We'll make this link available to you too if you want to take a deeper dive. Uh, into everything here because there's a lot here and we're not going to be able to go through all of it. But <clears throat> if you go on this website for the Idaho courts, you can see State of Idaho versus Brian Koberger. And this is a list of everything that has been filed in the courts since his arrest week to week. And then underneath it is that second legal battle that I was talking about, the Associated Press versus the Second Judicial Dis District. This is a coalition of media, which includes our parent company, Tegna, uh, that is suing the courts, hoping to have that gag order amended. 
The Coalition of Media is also suing, as well as the family of one of the victims, the Gonsalves family, Kaylee Gonsalves' parents, are also fighting to have the gag order amended to allow them to speak publicly leading up to any any uh, trial that may take place in this case. And I, I wanted to open up that first. The most recent filing in Koberger's case, and the list here on this website, is the objection to motion to appeal, amend, and or clarify amended non-dissemination order. This was filed by Koberger's attorneys. They are uh, arguing against that gag order. And what makes this fight unique is that the defense and the prosecution are actually on the same page here. Neither of them want the gag order to be amended. The, the reason being the same also is that their hope is that if these folks are barred from speaking about the case leading up to a trial, that helps to preserve the jury pool. And I wanted to pull up on this page... Uh, one line that I thought really like hit the nail on the head for the argument here, and this is the argument that Koberger's attorneys are making why they think the gag order should stay in place. But it, it, it also kind of summarizes the prosecution's argument as well. And here it is. It says, occasionally in conflict where protected pretrial expression threatens the impartiality of the jury, the United States Supreme Court has determined certain parties' First Amendment rights may be limited when exercise of those rights would result in prejudice to the defendant. And then there's a quote from another case that says, with his life at stake, it is not requiring too much that he, the defendant, in this case, Brian Koberger, be tried in an atmosphere undisturbed by so huge a wave of public passion. And certainly there has been a, a lot of public passion related to this case. And then the counter argument, which was filed in the court by an attorney representing our parent company, Tegna, and also uh, a coalition of different media companies that would then be affected by the gag order, uh, they have a counter argument all the way down here on page 13 that kind of summarizes, I think, also hits the nail on the head for why the media might be inclined to have this gag order amended to allow more people to speak as we head toward a trial. In fact, Mr. Koberger may be less prejudiced if well-informed and responsible individuals share some information rather than allowing the amended gag order to create a vacuum for mere speculation on the internet. And while there's been a lot of public passion about this case, there's also been quite a bit of speculation. And that's because there's so much we don't know. We talked about it earlier, right? The, the, the motive, how well Koberger may or may not have known these victims. They're all huge questions that still need to be answered, uh, that we're hoping to get answers to when that preliminary hearing happens on June 26th. But we have a lot of time until then. So at, at, while we wait for that, we are going to be going through these updated court documents week to week, seeing what we can learn. And hopefully we'll learn from some legal professionals as well who can also shed some light on what's going on behind the scenes as we wait for that preliminary hearing. And we'll hope you'll, we hope you'll tune in with us here on WNEP.com each week as we go through it all. This has been Case of Interest, Koberger. Thanks for joining us.